Hey there! This Revit tip is about duplicating views. And there are three options for duplicating views. And I'm going to show you the how and the why to use each of those three different options. So let's get my face out of the way here and get to our little plan. So this is our little floor plan that we're going to, I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. Now, um, this is my PLO1, which is my plan first floor, okay? And I've got some dimensions on here and some annotation, which is markers. And you could have some text on here as well. It doesn't matter. There's elevation marker and a couple grid lines, section marker. Okay. So it's just a normal floor plan, even though this is quite small. It's the world's smallest office. And um, what I want to show you guys is this. When you go to duplicate a view, there's a reason to duplicate a view. It would be... Let's suppose you wanted to um, use this plan, the first floor plan, for another purpose. You would duplicate the view. This is my main working drawing. But let's suppose I needed a furniture plan. So I would duplicate this first floor plan as a furniture plan and make it into a furniture plan. So here's how I would go about it. I would right click, you bring your cursor over and you right click on the plan that you want to duplicate. And there's the uh, duplicate view is listed. And there are the three options. There's duplicate, duplicate with detailing, and duplicate as a dependent. The top one, duplicate, will duplicate the view, but it leaves a few things out. It leaves out all your annotation. It leaves out your tags. It leaves out your dimensions and any um, annotation graphics that you've placed on the view. It does bring with it your section markers, your grid lines, and it brings your elevation markers. So let's do that, and I'll show you how it works. Duplicate. Here we go. Boom. Look at that. It brought the section markers, grids, elevation markers. But it cut out all the other annotation. Because suppose for, for a uh, furniture plan, I didn't need all that. Now, here's another best practice we're just going to throw in right now. Always, always, always rename your view right when you make it. So I'm going to right click on this and rename it to be our furniture plan. Okay, here we go. Furniture. Look, my spelling's pretty good today. All right, furniture plan. And I would go about um, hiding different things if I didn't want to have things in here specifically for, wait, let's just get that, for the furniture plan. I would clean this up a little bit further if I wanted to go um, it, for that use, for a furniture plan. It depends on what you're using it for. Now, let's suppose I needed a life safety plan, and I did want to have some of those other annotations on. I could right-click and use my second option here, duplicate with detailing. So let's go back to the plan first. All these. Take a look at what we have here. Now, right-click and duplicate with detailing is going to bring every single annotation piece with it. It's an identical copy of this view. So here, I'm going to click on that. Boom, there it is. See, we've got copy, and it is it brought everything with it. So I'm going to right-click and rename that. There's our best practice, remember? Um, life safety, right? Safety, there we go. And I would go about turning this into a life safety plan. That's how I would duplicate it. Now, there's a third option. If we go back to PLO1, there's a third option called duplicate as a dependent. Now, the reason that we would ever use that, and I just want to get this straight. A lot of people use it for different reasons, but they're using it incorrectly. The only reason you would ever duplicate a view as a dependent is if you, your floor plan didn't fit on a sheet. If your plan is so large that it needs match lines and you've got the west wing and the east wing and you need to put them on separate sheets because Revit does not allow you to take a floor plan and place it onto multiple sheets and then just crop it. It has to be a complete separate view. So, in that case, you would use du duplicate as dependent. And we're going to do that right here. I'm going to Let's look at our plan for a second. Let's just say this doesn't work on a sheet. Our sheet is, this plan is so large that we need to create this 
east wing, or that's the west wing. This will be the west wing, and this side will be the east wing. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate my view as a dependent. Now look what it did. It put it. It's a subset. It's a sub view under the main view right there. I'm going to right click and rename it. This will be our west west wing. Okay, for westing. And if I back out, you'll see that we've got our crop region here. So the west wing, all i got to do is put this right there. Okay, crop it out. Now I can take the time to bring the other crop markers in close. But what we've done is we've created a sub view under the main view. So if I go back to it, it's all still there. Okay, and you can see the view when I um, show my crop regions it shows you where that little west wing is okay so now I'm going to duplicate the view again as a dependent and this time I am going to rename it east wing rename east wing here we go okay the east wing and again I'm going to crop this down to just be the east wing. Now these, just in a moment, I can crop it. There we go, nice and clean. Okay, so that's just showing the east wing. We'll go back to the main plan and you'll see that they do overlap. Good. The overlap is where you're going to put your match line. And you can just click right up here on the view tab. You can click match line. And you're drawing yourself a nice purple line. I don't want it right there. There we go. Magenta line right through the middle of that and done. Okay. So that heavy match line is, um, that line is our, our match line. And we can see it on the east side when we're on the east wing and on the west wing. Okay. And this is where you could, I don't know, hide. You can hide things that are not relevant to this view. And they're still on and relevant in the other view. Okay. <clears throat> so I think that covers the three different types. I'm going to go back and reiterate. Duplicating a view without um, just duplicating a view will get the entire view minus all of your annotations. It will bring your grids and your elevation markers and your section markers. Duplicate as detailing will bring an entire view, an ab, a, uh, a full um, duplicate with all detailing and annotation. And duplicating as a dependent is only used when your, sheet, your, your plan will not fit onto a sheet and you need to separate it into two pieces. And... Um, and, you know, I was just about to say, I could go ahead and show you how to put a view reference on there. If you go back to the main parent view and you click on view reference, which is right below match line, view reference. I, I can put a view reference on this side and one on this side, okay? If I highlight it right up here at the top, it says, what are you pointing at? So when I'm on this side looking, the view reference is going to point back to the other side. So it needs to point back to the east, set up correctly. This one needs to point to the west wing, okay? So if I were to put these on sheets, let's go down here and put them on a sheet. I'll show you how this works. Here's the first floor plan west wing, west side, okay? There we go. There's the sheet for it. And I'm going to put the west wing here. Okay, there we go. West wing. You can see that it wouldn't fit on that sheet. Wow, obvious. So this is our west wing. And the view reference is not showing anything because the east wing has not been placed yet. So I will go open the east wing sheet and take our east wing and drop it on there. Okay, now it's showing. So take a look. East and west. When we're on the west side, the link takes us to 1A101B, which is the west wing. See? And when I'm on the, which I mean, which is the east side. And if I'm on the east side of the building, this one says go to A 101A, A 101B, A 101A. Anyway, 
You see what I'm talking about. Let me go back here. There. I don't like how they're shifting around like that. Let me, um, in fact, most of the time when I'm doing this, I will um, rotate them 90 degrees, place them right up against this. Okay. I know it's, it's, everybody's got their own way of doing it. Now, take a look at this. If you're in the West Wing drawing and you're working along and you need to get to the other side, these are hyperlinks. You can double click and it'll shoot you over to the other side. So you work and you need to get to the other side, you can jump over with that. Just by double clicking on that, it becomes a hyperlink. But you can also annotate and do a lot of work right here in the main PLO one. Anyway, okay, that covers them all, as well as the match line and the view references. Until next time, have a great time out there using Revit as your um, BIM software, and I'll get you another Revit tip here pretty soon. All right, thank you for viewing. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.